Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. You don't want to read chapter 1 and 2 to know more about the group? Never fear, here's a summary of our runners. Bite, the albino Asian decker. He also dabble in rigging. He's socially inept and doubles it down by being the greatest asshole in Seattle. He loves his older brother along with hating him for being gifted at everything. Short Fuse, the dwarf shaman worshipper of Dionysus. He's poor as fuck, smells of cheap booze, wears worned out clothes and he's a pretty nice guy. Always ready to help his community, one beer at a time. Dice, the elf infiltrator. She's a teenager assassin. Named Pepper and looking like the Pepper Pots from Iron Man, Armored Adventure, built like not. Batman, on a mission to kill her mentor and other targets. There's no backing out for her, since before leaving her her master poisoned his protege, and she's on a timer to kill him and get the antidote. She estimates that she still have less than a year. With luck, perhaps more. Wolfhound, the street Sammy. The orcish equivalent of Wolverine with rocket feet. Got a grudge against Apex and his gang the wild dogs, and he's ironically afraid of dogs. He's a badass that can't easily be taken down, and if he tells you he'll get your job done in 30 minutes, expect it complete and less than that. After what was a successful and extremely bloody run, all for the sake of paying this man's rent, the forerunners each went their way home. Wolfhound went and crashed on his sofa inside his small apartment and hoped that his enhanced body would heal his tight injury. He had hoped to heal his wound in silence and solitude, but he wasn't taking into account that his neighbors liked to blast music on their speaker at all time. Well it's the price to pay for cheap rent, and the music ain't bad even if he can barely sleep through it. Dice in her case went to her knot. Batcave and brood or something like that. She was particularly feeling like the Cape Crusader that night. Surprisingly Bite followed short fuse to the Redmond Baron's commune. After being punched in the chest by a powered up ninja boss Yakuza leader he felt pretty shitty, and he doubted he could heal the natural way. And even less go to a regular hospital. Despite Bite being a jerk during the whole way back to the commune, and finding new and colorful insults about dwarfs, height and hygiene each time his chest aches, the two of them finally reached the commune and headed for the abandoned hospital. This building officially belongs to a DR Jeremiah Dent. But around here everyone knows the guy under the name DR Smiles. Amonsk the commune, there are groups and individual that hold this mess of a community together. Believe it or not, it's atrociously hard to have around 5000 people living in absolute poverty keeping it together. First off you have Hope and her immediate family. She is the direct leader of the commune, she is a kind soul and she commands the respect of any in her presence. Then you have the newly recruited Iron Maidens. They are your equivalent of pop idols around there, that is if your pop idols are mostly made of metal, can bend your spine and live among the homeless. There are also other minor gangs and interesting characters that live there, but if you have to ask who holds the most power, second to hope, then it would be DR Smiles. Main reason? Most of the money that passed through this sector either went through his pockets, or he had played a role in it somehow. He's also recognized as one of the best doctors and surgeon that you can find in the shadows. After what amounts to an hour of insults, Bite was finally brought to the doctor. He was unceremoniously dumped on a chair and the mage Shadowrunner went on his merry way. This granted him Anna to comment on how dwarfs brains might be inversely proportionate to the length of their beards. When Bite was finally done with his rent he decided to look at the doctor, and to try to judge what kind of person he is. Smiles was a man in his late 30s, but his mannerism was closer to someone in his mid 50s. He has dark unkept hair, a small beard and he looks completely dead inside. I'd say his physical description would fit Butcher from the boys, but more annoyed and depressed and with 50% more coffee. Smiles, uncaring, what brings you here? Bite, sarcastic, I dunno, I guess of you. I also though on my way here that you could chest my chest wound. Not that I dislike wearing a red shirt now, but it's a little inconvenient. Smiles. Well doctor's orders here. First, 
Stop being a bitch. You might get yourself hurt less. Second, watch your tone when you talk to the oot fixing you up. And third let me check your wound, if what I think that's happening, is happening, you might be bleeding internally and could die in the next hours. Bite, pale, wait what? Why why you're sure about t that? Smiles, nope, but if it's the case you're wasting time if you don't shut your trap. Now take off your shirt, you're paying for the hour after all. The next three days went by smoothly. The infiltrator decided to spend her nights patrolling the city in search of small crimes to prevent. Wolfhound lounged around on his sofa watching shitty action flick Tridius and working out. Short Fuse went to help repair the walls and defense systems around the commune and bite rest during three days at the hospital, with new bandages, surgery scars and pills he has to take every day for two weeks. But most importantly, everyone paid their rents on time. Then came the time for the runners to take on a new job. Well not really a job, but the possible payday would be as big as a corporate level run. Hope was sipping some coffee in her room, waiting for her team of runners. As a fixer, she was not talented at all, but she hoped that with this new opportunity that she found she and her team could climb higher in the shadow community. The first to arrive was Wolfhound. He has really taken to it to arrive early in meetings and to appear as professional as possible. Well he would appear more professional if he had taken breakfast before coming here and wasn't eating 5 burritos in her office. Second to arrive was Short Fuse. Apparently he was a bit delayed because some of the neighboring ghouls had found a breach in the defense and his help was needed to repair the damages. It took the might of the Iron Maidens, especially Lily, Lara, Marie Jane, Elizabeth and Delilah, as well as Hope's sons to put a stop to the horde. The commune's mayor was hoping to learn more about it later, in case such event happens again. Third to come was Bite, still feeling a bit nauseous from his recovery, but at least he was in full health. At least Hope wished it was the case, since the hacker hasn't spoke a word or hasn't said anything that would make someone throw a chair at him. He just sat in his corner, opened his comlink and played games on it. Last was Dice. Like before she came running late, bursting through the door and quickly said she was sorry for being late, she came as fast as she could and that she was helping an old lady cross the street. With her team assembled, Hope was finally ready to give them her newest find in terms of job, and hopefully her runners will like this change of pace. Hope, good news everyone. I think I have found the perfect job for you guys. Bite, that'd be a first. Hope, with a menacing glare towards the decker. I had to shake a lot of hands to get you this, especially on such short notice, but I think you guys are up for it. She then pulls out a poster from a drawer and showed it to the group. It was representing a group of cars racing throughout a city, with some intentionally colliding with one another. Hope, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but there is a special event organized by most of the crime syndicate here in Seattle. It's the Baron's Death Course. It's one of the most awesome thing that happens around during this time of year. Short fuse, I see. So you want us to infiltrate this event and meet our Johnson there? Hope, nope. Wolfhound, I think she meant that one of the crime family participating in this has hired us to take care of one of the participants. Hope, nope. Guess again. You got one chance left. Dice, unsure if she wants to be right or not, you want us to participate? Hope. Bingo. A dozen second passed in complete silence. The Shadowrunners were quite taken by surprise by the news. Then the street samurai opened his mouth first. Wolfhound, you want us to race? Hope, yep. Wolfhound, in an event held by the greatest crime lords in this side of the continent. Hope, haha. Wolfhound, a competition that has no doubt a lot of money put into because of every criminal in the city betting on who would win the competition. Hope, quite. Wolfhound, and you want us, a newly formed group with barely any connection to the underground to go against all of them? Hope, exactly. Bite, I knew it, she's mental. The street Sam was pretty stoic, as if he was waiting for a camera crew to jump up from behind Hope's desk and tell him it's an elaborate prank. The dwarf and the elf were looking at each other, rethinking if they still want to be Shadowrunners. The albino decker was simply venting his frustration against the world at whoever decided to listen. It took some time, 
but the team finally managed to calm down and listen to what Hope had to say. Hope, look, you're just a bunch of new guys with barely anything to show, and you're with me, an ex shadowrunner that recently became a fixer. We ain't the prime candidate right now and during those three days I haven't got new job offer for you. So unless you want to wait until someone needs a milk run or something, this is the best we got. And that's not all. There's a lot of good benefits. Just by participating you can gain a lot of rep. Just survive the first round and you're bound to get someone's attention, along with jobs and cash. Dice. Survive? Hope? Yeah. It's not named Baron's Death Course for naught. Don't worry thought, the beginning is quite harmless, so you have good chance to make it out alive. Short fuse, what if we go through it round one? Hope, well that second round is the best. Not for you though, but like I said, you're not obligated to reach that. But yeah pretty awesome. It's a kind of demolition derby death match where the racers and their teammates fight against one another, and the last one standing wins. Dice, well. It could be fun? Short fuse, I guess. Problem is, I'm no expert driver. Bite, we got a bigger problem, don't you think? We don't even have a car. This whole run is a joke. Our fixer is a joke. Hope, who seems on the verge of strangling the hacker, well about that. Excitement. This would be the most accurate word to describe the group's reaction when they faced it yet it fails to represent the amount of hype the majority of the runners had. In front of them was standing Pepper's Ra's Roadmaster. Her Batmobile. But it wasn't just her old vehicle. It was new and improved with the cash bite spent on it. It had obvious armor mods that rendered it as impervious as a regular tank, a smuggling compartment that could hide any large objects from any kind of scanner known to man. A manual control override in case we find ourselves against a decker better than ours nada chamelin coating. Because it wouldn't be a batmobile as it wasn't sneaky. Or that we could change its color to black at any moment. For those who don't know, an Ra's Roadmaster is the closest a civilian can get to an actual take that he could drive in any neighborhood. It's a big metal box that tries to conspicuously pass for a van. In one of my friend's previous game. Their unmodified Ra's Roadmaster managed to survive a direct hit from a tank with anti-tank piercing rounds. So to say that this vehicle is in a way pretty high end is no joke, thought it has pretty obvious weaknesses, so don't take my words for gospel. The only one in the team who wasn't interested, or rather, wasn't showing it, was the human albino. Even after Hope showed the team's new vehicle, that he paid a lot for, he was still unsatisfied. Annoyed by his attitude, the fixer finally asked what was troubling the man. He answered that Al thought Hope seemed to have everything planned out there was one critical mistake in her plan. And Ra's Roadmaster is quite durable, yes, but in terms of speed is it nothing more than a glorified golf cart in a race? How can the team ever hope to make it to the second round, even less win? Even if the troll lady said that what's important is to participate to gain attention. Nobody will take the team seriously if a bunch of nobody joins a race only to finish last. With all that said, Byte decided to head home, and he told his team that either he'd join a new team or he'd find the group a new fixer that isn't a clown with tusks and horns. In all his life, Raylal has always felt like everything was against him. Starting from his condition as an albino who can't enjoy most outside activities, even if clear sunny days are a rare sight in Seattle with all the rains and smog, his inhumane ability to spill his spigooty in front of any women, either by being his usual jerk self or tripping with his words, usually both, or simply the bad luck of being born outside of the luxurious and sanitary life of a corpor. All he had going for him was his skills with the Matrix, but his brother completely outclasses him. Now he's going back to a house that isn't his, Hearing a tale of how his bro so oh wonderfully saved the day and made a lot of cash, while he crashed on a couch and chat with his friends online. When he entered the house, there wasn't any sound, which was unusual considering there was supposedly the noise of diverse machines and computers always active. But nothing. There was no one. Most of the place has been emptied, from the smallest electric appliance to the biggest furniture. Well everything except a table with a pizza and a note on it. Hey lil bro. If you read this, it means I didn't have more time to spare and explain to you what's happening. Well I screwed up big time. 
I don't mean I botched a job. You know I always nail Thos suckers. Good thing is, I got myself too much rep. Some of the big shots have begun their head hunts with a little too much enthusiasm. We both know I like big stacks of money and comfort, but truth is I value my freedom above all else. So yeah I scrammed, and also took anything related to me so I won't get tracked down. But hey. You got yourself a new table. Okay, I admit it's not one of my best jokes, but I know you'll be alright. And I'll personally know it. If your big bro knows one thing, it's how to spy on other people. So keep living your best life, enjoy the life of a shadowrunner. I know I like it, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Though I don't think I'll be able to celebrate your birthday that's coming. Oh also I've learned that your fixer hooked you up in a racing competition. I know I would have participated if I had the chance. But hey, you got said chance. Man, I'm so envious. I know you can do it lil bro, you got winner coded in your DNA. Win this one. I know you can make me proud. See ya later. Your big bro 4RC4D. After a consolation pizza, the decker called his friends telling that if he comes back into the team, they have to race to win. First they had to gather info on the race. After pressing their fixer they have learned more about the competition. 1. It starts in exactly 7 days. 2. Only one vehicle and one driver can register, but the driver can register with a team. 3. To win the tournament, both the driver and the vehicle must survive. The teammates are expendable. 4. Under no circumstance can one team sabotage a driver or a vehicle before the race officially starts. If it is proven that a vehicle has been tampered beforehand, or that the driver has been compromised before the event, then the culprits will be handled with extreme prejudice. 5. Only 10 teams can pass the first round. 6. The race starts from Everett, goes through Snarhamish and ends its course into a special arena in the Redmont Barrens. Now the next step would be to know who's the competition, and to be prepared for it. For this operation, Harvey decided to hang out with his buddy Guilty. Guilty is a big troll, which for you regular folks might sound like a redundance or even internet lingo, but when I say big troll, I meant that the fucker is almost as fat as he is tall, and a troll's average height is 8 feet 2. He's also a weapon dealer and all around informant for the right price. In the past he has told Wolfhound where to find members of the wild dogs, and he was the one who sold him his sniper rifle. A sublime Ra's desert strike, smart gun, that the street Sammy never bothered using up to this point because he likes fighting in close combat too much. The two met in front of Mama's finest, and even if it was a restaurant firstly built for all controls, his fat ass still occupied a whole booth. Guilty was in the middle of chugging down donuts as if they were tic tacs. Though he went to town on his onion rings and french fries like some kind of magnificent hippopotamus. Most of the patrons were revolted by such a performance, but Wolfhound having his sense of disgust burned out of him just sat there, having fun at the expense of the customers. Between two bites he asked the Sammy what it was that he was after. Guns? Ammo? Illegal shit. How to get the ladies? The street Sam answered that what he's after is info this time and possibly anything that can ease his future task. Guilty, so whatcha munch munch up to? Munch munch whatcha need gumpf to know? Wolfhound, well I'm participating in the Baron's death course, and I need to know who I'm facing. I think I can handle the second round, but I need info and gear to jare through the first. Guilty, so ya need slew about some data? Glorp dirt? Chomp whatcha riding? Wolfhound, ain't it a secret? I don't want you to bet against me, or worse tip off our opponents. Guilty, haha, <laughs> fool. Munch munch as if yari big enough nom nom for anyone to plan gulp anything against ya. Wolfhound, we're riding in Ra's Roadmaster. Guilty, ha 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 ha. Why in god's name would ya try a race slurp with that? Gumpf look, for the second part ya thought well, it could work munch munch but I can hardly see how ya'd make it through first part. Chomp D ya planning to kill everyone? Wolfhound, ever heard about the rabbit and the turtle? I think it's doable, and we'll take out as many as it takes for us to qualify, nothing more. Guilty, lem see what I got for ya. 
while the street samurai were negotiating Infus with his buddy the rest of the team went their own way to guarantee an edge during the race. Byte went to see a hacker friend of his for help on his driving abilities. Because we have decided that he was the designated driver, and he wasn't too thrilled at the idea. On one hand he's essential to pass to win the tournament so he's got maximum protection, but on another hand he's the main target. Sad thing is, he's the only one who invested in the piloting skill, since dice just fly around Batman style. Wolfhound has his rocket feet and short fuses a hobo who never learned to drive. Speaking of the mage, he went with the infiltrator to talk with one of her contacts. His name is Chris White, and he's the Jim Gordon to her Dark Knight. As badass as it is, and Ra's Roadmaster, while still legal to drive around town, is bound to get the attention of the cops. Like what? Do you really need a full ton of metal death on wheels to go through our really safe city? The cop agreed with a bit of bribery to give a special pass for us so we won't get arrested, well as long as we don't break any law. He also warned us that many crime families have done the same and even got some protection, so if possible do not touch those guys. Well at least as long as they are in the peaceful civilian zones. He also suggested that if we take out some of the competitors to send a phone call his way so he can pick them up. If he gets a good catch he might let us go through some reserved access area that would gain us time. During the following days the group did some jobs for guilty, like being added protections for deal that went wrong, which included a radiated rampaging troll armed with a big rock chasing us around, playing hot potato with a bomb in the concealed compartment and deliver it to a gang hideout before the timer went out, he said it'd be practice for the race, and to face a building that belonged with a gang. We drew dicks on it. All in all, with those favors Guilty got us some good info on the contestants, and some nice gear to boot. Well really by nice gear I mean explosives. Lots of them. There was also plenty of cash laying around but we decided to put it in the party's bank in case we need it someday. Also we bought a bunch of pepper grenades. We've heard the murder dome is an enclosed space so we have hope that it'd be effective. So we planned everything that we could. We upgraded our ride, we bought weapons, short fuse summoned spirits to aid, we got a great itinerary, and a better one coming if we take down some punks, and all the shadowrunners were in position. Bite at the driving seat. Short fuse as his co-pilot, and dice on the neighboring rooftops, ready to swoop in at any second. Wolfhound ready to set traps and prepare an ambush in the barrens, only waiting for the race to start. The GM planned at first to go a bit easy on us, because after all we're driving a slow vehicle. We just need to survive the way through it. Oh was he so wrong. He hadn't taken into account how up spirits are. Mind you he's well aware of their strength, but he hasn't planned every possible scenario. You see before the race short fuse managed to summon four spirits, two of air and two of fire. The latters are for combat and they took the shape of majestic fire-breathing bulls made of bronze, while the formers are the nitro of the Ra's Roadmaster. You see, Air Spirit got that useful power named movement that allows to multiply or divide the speed of anything it desires, by the spirit's magic rating. Considering that Short Fuse spent a whole day summoning recklessly powerful spirits, yeah, we were fast as fuck what? Not only we have the second spirit as a backup engine in case the first pops off, but it could also be used to slow down the runner-ups in the competition. So at the race you had the Irish Mafia, Italian Mafia, Triads, Cartels, Yakuza's, Halloweeners, Gangers, Bikers, Hackers with robot cars and other Shadowiners, all with their fancy wheels and their super weapons, outclassed by the metal soapbox driven by Little Hoos. I am proud but also ashamed of myself on that one. Mostly because I trivialized a good chunk of the first round. The others still had their fun disrupting the race sure, but unfortunately I took out the pressure of acting quick or otherwise we fail. But before disappointment settles in, we decided to turn the race the other way around. You see, by leading the race and being so far ahead you get some unwanted attention. If we make it to the second round we're sure to have everyone gunning for us. So what's the best strategy? Take out the best, and leave the rest. 
Dice and Wolfhound's mission had changed to kill enough to make us pass to aim for the top dogs. Just a few minutes ago, one of the most important events in the criminal world has just started. Dozens of criminals were racing against each other, all competing to win the grand prize and gaining the street cred that comes with it. But where were our shadowrunners? Bite and Short Fuse were at the top of the line, already way ahead of the other pilots. They surprised everyone and took the reins of the whole event by being in the front this early. Wolfhound just finished installing some mines at critical choke points. Now that his goal has changed, he placed the explosive charges at where the cars belonging to the big shot crime. Syndicates were most likely to go. He didn't used up all his bombs though, since many other teams had the same idea, and time being on the essence he couldn't waste some dealing with some punks. He decided that his best course of action would be to hide on the roof so buildings at the barons and to snipe any vehicle coming his way. Dice in her case was regretting most of her life and all the choices she had made up to this point. Why? Because she made the mistake of using her grappling hook on one of the fastest cars and she critically glitched her free falling test. At this point she was dragged at dozens of miles per hour into the sky, spinning like a top and emptying her stomach on unfortunate citizens who were just enjoying a nightly walk. So the first eliminations were the beakers. Their whole strategy was strengthened in number by having the whole crew ride together, and hiding the main driver and bike amongst them. Not a bad plan, except that they live in a world where thrown fireballs are an active health hazard. Needless to say they couldn't take the heat. There were others that fell during the race, but we couldn't know exactly who it was that got squashed by the competition. But Pepper being the EYS in the sky did report them to her cop friend and claimed all the hits on us, like the thieving bastards that we are. Luckily speaking is a free action, but the player did have to RP vomiting in between long sentences. Really bad idea. Having managed to bullshit and lie about the takedowns thanks to an edge roll, which she should have used to free herself from her predicament emo, the infiltrator received intel on a secret route the Lone Star agent managed to free for us. He also told her that with our van speeding as it is it would be the only way we could reach the barons without being arrested by the other renter cops. It took some time but after passing through Everett and Snarhamish the infiltrator finally freed herself from her grappling hook. About time too. It took so many rolls that she started taking stun damages. And being a recorded event, she was also ruining her image by being compared to a meta-human shaped pinata filled with vomit with rocket engines glued to it. The street Sammy was perched on top of her abandoned skyscraper, casually sniping at the first racers that entered the barrens. So far he has taken down 3 bikers, one Yakuza driving a Honda Spirit, some cartel members with their Toyotas and he took out the engine of some kind of half race car and half submarine vehicle that surely belonged to a team of runner. Which made them reasonably angry. You see during the first round even if your team is eliminated, there's nothing preventing you from ruining the day of other teams. And now that we've been in first place since the start plus our sniper taking out some groups. Yeah they were now out for blood. The team of runners that Wolfhound just put a stop to exited their car, and gracefully thanked our team's gun experts for letting them live by doing two things. First they invaded Wolfhound's hideout and were climbing the skyscraper guns in hands. There was three of them. A troll with a riot shield, an orc with an SMG and a mohawk and a dwarf with two doberman drones. Luckily for Wolfhound, Robot Dogs doesn't trigger his phobia of them like real ones. Curious thing is, the Sammy was sure he spotted a fourth one, but he couldn't find him anywhere. He wondered where the missing one went and just as he was wondering it, his question has been answered in the form of a blue meteor racing through the sky. Wolfhound, guys, we got a problem. Bite, what do you mean a problem? Short fuse, yeah, what he said. Wolfhound, there's a blue thing with wings coming your way. I think it's a spirit. Bite, blue thing with wings? Holy fucking Jesus Christ tap dancing shit dicks. Blue shell. Blue shell. Blue shell. Short fuse do something a Short fuse, what am I supposed to do? Bite, anything. Everything. Just make it stew up. 
The dwarf ordered the backup spirit of air to do whatever it takes to stop the incoming blue shell of death and destruction. The eagle made of wind of light lightning then flew right at the speeding threat, closed his eyes and I could swear the GM whispered Superman right before the impact. Sacrificing your spirits that way is a sure way to not get friends among them, but nevertheless we all saluted the heroic deed of that magical avian. So the first round ended with less teams than originally planned. Most casuals during the race were arrested by the cops and security forces, as well as most of the concurrents that were taken out because we were little snitches. Into the final round only 7 teams remained. The first team qualified was us, with our R's roadmaster that bite named the Beauty Wagon, or Loot Wagon if you prefer. The decker had installed a concealed compartment into the van so he could enact his best impression of a blood raven in Shadoran. The second and third one were limos belonging to the Italian and Irish Mafia. They each took like they were at each other's throats, and the best course of action is to let them tear each other apart. The riggers on both of them do seem like they know each other. Fourth team was belonging to the Yakuza faction. Wolfhound did try to take them out like he did with the other one, but they still managed to get away. Fortunately, they suffered an ambush from feral ghouls not long after so their car was pretty beat up. I think it was a Toyota minivan, I don't really remember. Fifth team was a hauler painted like Optimus Prime. All we knew about it is that they were friends of Byte's brother 4RC4D and were extremely tech savvy. They were new to the racing hobby just like us and they named their truck the Mythbuster, because they intend to squash the legends of the underground world with it. Sixth one Ramatol Wolf II. For those who have no clue what I'm saying. Just imagine that our team took a civilian van, pimped it up to what's pretty close to military level badassery and hoped we could make it through a city filled with cops who asked for nothing else than to put us in a dark cell to get anally raped for being sinless idiots speeding on the highway. And now in front of our eyes there was a full spec op car that could take almost as much punishment as ours and upgraded. We had no idea who those guys were, but one thing's for sure. We weren't in the kiddies pool anymore. If we don't drop no, we'll start playing with the big boys with the big grudges that hate to lose. The final team was the Halloween gang, who picked a school bus, filled it with all the weapons and spooky shit they could find and stick it all together with spit and glue. We called it the magic school bus. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. There was a brief pause between round 1 and 2 to let the teams reassemble, do some quick repair, replenish their ammo and refresh themselves. Wolfhound who has been dodging the best he could the assault from the other runner teams was relieved when the signal for the end of the first round rang. Luckily the other runners weren't dicks and were being fair play and let the Sammy go. Before going however, Wolfhound introduced himself to the other team and exchanged comlink number and infos with them. He befriended Buckler the troll and team leader, Spearhead the orc adept and Digger the dwarf rigger. Meanwhile Dice, after showing people what she had for dinner in colorful ways, went straight ahead to a ramen stand. She also decided that for the next part of the contest she'd maximize the time she'd spent in cloak mode. With a little luck everyone would forget what she did and not live the rest of her life being known as Vomit Girl. Bite and Short Fuse decided to stay in the beauty wagon and pray they survive the second round. We didn't have much of a strategy really. We were counting on our van to soak as much damage as possible and possibly not explode while the two fire spirits that Short Fuse summoned earlier do the heavy lifting. In the meantime Wolfhound would deliver his last explosive charges to whoever charges at us and Dice would use her monofilament whip to shred as much health as possible from the other vehicles. We had a sound plan in theory, but we forgot one detail. We were the unknown factor, the underdog who snatched the first place in the first round, and every team decided to trample us first. 
except the Irish and Italians. Those two limos slammed into each other and never bothered to fight anyone else during the whole round. The first to act were the yaks going full speed ahead with assault rifles. Luckily their rolls were shit and they just drove by after. Second was us. We sent one fireball after them and the second after the wolf eye eye. Reason was that we wanted to gain rep by destroying the competition, and to keep the biggest threat occupied. If there's one thing I can tell you, is that spirits are not to be underestimated. The first fire spirit completely demolished the yaks with a critical success, they must really hate our guts by that point. It threw a burst of flame that vaporized the car. Like you know in Skyrim when you fight a giant at low level and he send you on a one way trip to the moon? That was it, but with 200% more death and rocket fuel. The second did hit the wolf eye, but sadly it had less success than hoped. They tanked the fire breath attack and despite some parts of their car melting with the heat, they were still in the race. With the two mafia syndicates at each other's throat, our only enemies were the Halloweeners, 4 RC4D's friends and the mysterious military van. Seeing that the gangers were the easiest threat to deal with, Dice and Wolfhound flew at them with their rocket feet and not. Bat cape. Dice wanted to slice them up, but unfortunately there was over a dozen gangers in the murder bus, which would take too much time and be incredibly dangerous. So Wolfhound opted for an easier solution. He ordered Pepper to cut up enough chunks off the pile of junk so he could dump the rest of his explosive charges in it. It took a while but the resulting firework was completely worth it. Sadly Wolfhound received a few pot shots from the pumpkin enthusiasts, but being the super orc that he is he would heal from it in no time. The military team didn't waste time against the spirit. Some of them deployed from their car and established a secure perimeter around it. Then came the heavy fire. Foss guys were packing serious heat. Like in one turn they nearly popped off a force 10 fire spirit. Then our beauty wagon got hacked, which forced by to active the manual control override, which in turn halved his piloting skills. Learning from the yaks and halloweeners, the mythbusters crew unleashed everything they had against us. Inside the trailer of their truck, they had a swarm of drones and nanites assault the Ra's roadmaster. Slowly the vehicle was getting dissected like a frog during bio, with the hacker and the mage being at the mercy of 4 RC4D's friends. I haven't said it yet, but summoning the 4 spirits, with 2 of them at force 10, really drained the dwarf, so we couldn't count on my character unless the situation was extremely dire. Which was pretty close to at that point. We were stuck deciding on the best course of action. Either we focus on the group who seems to have military training, and are currently destroying one of our heavy hitter. Or we focus on the riggers that were dismantling our van. We decided to make a bet. First we sent the second fire spirit to the spec ops. When he saw that his brother was nearly dead because of those metahumans, the bronze ball was seeing red. The two spirits threw a fireball that combined together into a massive one and blew the wolf eye, eye sky high. What's more impressive however is that a small piece of the car remained among the wreckage. It was a rigger cocoon, partly destroyed. The mysterious men recovered their pretty burned up rigger from the ruins, and retreated out of the arena under a cloud of smoke. Before they disappeared Wolfhound had the time to use his enhanced vision from his sibaries on them and noticed a symbol representing a K and a E on one of their gears. Somehow, Knight Errant was involved in this race. We then sent the spirits at the Mythbuster, as well as having Wolfhound and Dice jump on their new target. Short Fuse casted a increased reflex at a really high force, suffering physical wounds from the feedback and bleeding from his nose and ears. But it gave their team what it needed to win. While Wolfhound did some pretty solid blows to the hauler, it was Dice that completely demolished it. With the increase in speed she cut the truck's engine apart like it was made of cardboard. Just in time, since the drones had breached our ride's defense and had begun their work. And that's how we won the Baron's death course. We won the grand prize, around 100 plus newions and other goodies if I remember right. We brought glory to Hope and her commune and we raised our street cred pretty high. The GM didn't expect it us to win the tournament, but we went above and beyond on that run. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end.
Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.